Okay, today on Tree Talk, we are discussing black cherry, Prunus serotina. Um, this is a very, very big one uh, that you see here, but it is very easy to identify uh, by the bark, both when it is immature and when it's mature. Um, when it's mature, especially in the kind of north part of, of its region, of, of eastern forest, um, I have heard people describe it as uh, they look like burnt potato chips. Um, they are little flaky blocks. Um, some of them kind of turn up at the edges, um, but quite easy to identify. There isn't a lot of stuff that looks like this that has this this uniform flaky uh, bark. Um, when it is young, the lenticels are what really, really stick out. I'm going to try to find a young cherry uh, while we're walking around here today, but I may not be able to um, because it is not very tolerant of shade. And we're in a mature forest right now, uh, dominated by black cherry, so um, it probably regenerated when it, uh, after a fire or after a timber harvest, something like that, when the woods were more open, is how we got this beautiful stand of black cherry um, that we have here now. Um, so beyond the bark and the lenticels, the uh, horizontal, very distinctive lenticels on the uh, young stems, I was able to dig up some leaves, but you know, it's late winter, so um, kind of have a hard time. Uh, they are, here's a, a, a nice smorgasbord of, of uh, leaf shapes here for us. So there, this is kind of what we typically have. It's um, not super wide, um, a, a little bit longer, you know, uh, elliptical. Um, you can kind of see it here. Um, on uh, the the leaf tissue during the growing season, it has this rusty brown uh, hairs at the very base of the uh, midrib um, towards the towards the end of the leaf. Uh, the the I guess the front end of the leaf, the rachis end of the leaf. Um, so that is distinctive from other cherries. I have a hard time, to be honest, uh, distinguishing between the other cherry species, um, but black cherry to me really stands out. Um, it flowers in the spring, right about the same time that the leaves are starting to break. Um, so probably, I would guess, maybe um, mid to late April, somewhere in there. Um, it is beetle pollinated, so it has these white spike flowers that are actually really pretty, um, but they're kind of stinky because things that are stinky, um, beetles are going to be gravitated to. If you have a flower that is stinky, it's probably fly or beetle pollinated rather than something sweet smelling, which would be more for our bees and our, uh, our butterflies, things like that. Um, speaking of wildlife, um, this tree is excellent for wildlife. It has pretty uh, reliable, heavy mass crop, so it, it's kind of constantly churning out seeds, but um, really big um, mast years every couple of years. Um, and that I, we've talked about that on, on many other tree talks, but that is likely a strategy to sort of swamp the predators. And those predators are songbirds, mammals, um, everything basically in the woods is going to eat black cherry fruit, very high in nutrition. Um, and they are nice and juicy, so some people eat them. People make a, uh, will make brandies out of them, jams, flavorings, that kind of stuff. Um, I have heard that they're a little bitter. I've never tried them myself because they're pretty tall trees, and it's kind of hard. I don't know how people collect all these berries on them. Um, up here in the northern extent of the range, I mentioned that they, they do get l relatively large. They're kind of a medium to large size tree. Um, down in, in sort of the southeast of the U.S., they are a little bit smaller, and they, there's a little bit of variation in how they look. Um, the bark can be kind of a darker, like a blacker color, um, whereas here it's kind of this somewhere between brown, red, kind of dark brown to red color. Um, but no matter where it is, it is very valuable for wildlife. Now with timber, it is super, super valuable here um, in the Northeast. Um, it is one of the top timber species every single year um, in Pennsylvania. Um, really beautiful, beautiful wood. And you've probably seen cherry, you know, furniture, uh, cabinetry, finishing, trim, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of like your premier, you know, finishing wood um, because it has a really beautiful color and it's sturdy. Um, and so that makes it one of the uh, best timber species that we have up here. Now, it, where it is a little bit smaller and scruffier in the south, it's less of a valuable uh, timber species there, but um, up here it is uh, number one. Um, so uh, yeah, there you have it. Black cherry, Prunus serotina, really lovely species. Um, as far as habitat goes, you'll find it basically anywhere. Um, it, it grows quite fast in the open. I see it as kind of a pioneer species oftentimes in, say, a hedgerow or in an old field, things like that. Um, because it does like, you know, a lot of sun. Um, in the woods, you'll find it mostly in kind of mesic conditions. Um, you'll see it sometimes up on a drier ridge. Um, it's, it doesn't usually like super wet feet, but that kind of mesic, you know, forest condition is kind of really key for it. Um, that is sort of, a, that's another uh, qualifying factor, I guess, for, you know, good germination of black cherries. We want a lot of moisture in that leaf litter. Um, if it's too dry, they're not going to make it. Or if it's too wet, they'll, they'll rot. Um, so right in the middle there, growing big and strong and supporting a lot of wildlife. Um, and our uh, local uh, forest products economy. So uh, great tree, black cherry.